happy to be here with a kindred spirit, Jessica Lohman. Um, Jessica, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, right. So let me just kind of give you, give uh, folks a quick background, your you know your quick uh, sense of your background, and then we'll get going on this conversation about ethical brand marketing. Um, so uh, Jessica has spent uh, some time in the corporate world, and then the last almost decade, she has been building up her company, Ethical Brand Marketing. You have a great uh, sort of poster thing back there, uh, <laughs> Jessica. I love it. Um, to help social entrepreneurs create and implement a non-manipulative marketing strategy. So we're going to talk a lot about that. I think my audience will, will enjoy this conversation. Um, you're also a voice talent, Jessica, and you've narrated documentary documentaries and commercials and even done some characters for like gaming projects. Uh, so that's that's a lot of fun. You've also published mm -hmm. a children's fantasy addressing the topic of animal testing. That's mm -hmm. Awesome. So um, let's get into this conversation about ethical marketing because that's what uh, we're both, that's what you know, we kind of connected on. And I'm just curious, um, you know, as you, uh, uh, coach and teach um, fellow business owners. What's a what's a marketing mistake that you that you see them making a lot? Um, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, basically, that a lot of marketers or we're be we're taught to persuade customers to buy, no matter what, and. Um, yeah, the, the problem I have with that is that when people are persuaded to do something, to me, that's manipulation. And then they, they don't buy anything out of their own free will. It's with the, with the um, manipulation tactics, they're like being kind of forced to buy something. I mean, forced is a, is a harsh word, but this, the word persuasion, it, I don't, yeah, I just think that's not the most ethical way to to get somebody to buy something. And even the word to get somebody to buy something, that to me, I have a problem with that as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah we're we yeah. so aligned on this because it's like, <laughs> it's like, hmm, would you do that to a, a friend <laughs> or would exactly. you do that to somebody you care about? Hmm. Exactly. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that's just the biggest myth of marketing. Um, I even read it like in, in LinkedIn, there was a post. Um, yeah, our goal as marketers is to persuade somebody to buy. And I'm like, no, it's not, it's not. And um, um, well, you yeah, know, maybe we maybe have... we could say conventional marketing. <laughs> that's that's yeah, their goal. Yeah, but, exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, so given that you have been um, you know, thinking about this and working on the ethical marketing for, for this time and what is, let's like kind of define that. Um, what is your definition of ethical marketing? Yeah, um, to me, ethical marketing means to help consumers make a more conscious choice. And even if that means don't buy this product or service, um, because basically we want, we want customers and clients to be loyal. We want to nurture them. We want to help them. It's, it's about them. It's not about us. It's not about us selling, selling, selling. Um, it should be about providing a service or a product that actually helps people. And I remember like studying marketing a long time ago um, in the United States, we learned about the four Ps, right? Remember those? Product, placement, promotion, and price. Well, what's missing from that equation? People. And of course, our planet. Um, and so, uh, yeah, those are the two most important aspects of marketing, I think, people and the planet. Um, because if we can't help people, if we're just trying to manipulate them into buying something, we're not going to create a loyal customer base. They're going to get aggravated because maybe they you know, if they're, if they're not in it a hundred percent and say, yes, I want this, or I need this, and they have to be persuaded to buy something, then, you know, like for an online course, they're not going to finish the course. I've done it a gazillion times. They're not going to finish. They're not going to come back and buy something because they'll get frustrated um, because they weren't a hundred percent in it to begin with. So what I focus on 
in my marketing is I call them the four C's, communication, collaboration, connection, and creativity. Um, and of course, all of that has to do with helping to save our environment, helping to save species, um, because that's, yeah, that's my thing. I try to, um, you know, help clients who are also trying to protect our environment and animals. Um, I help them and I also work with, with the SDGs, the, U, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a different, it's, I wouldn't say it's a different way of marketing, but it's just a different way of, of approaching people, of talking about your product and service, of, of connecting with people. Mm. And I'd like to see more of that. Yeah, uh, I love it. I, I definitely want to come back to, to the four C's. I think that's really, mm. really neat that you come up with that. Um, and then you, now you've brought in the, you know, the sustainable development goals and that's part of, uh, you know, you your, well, your brand and your sort of values and uh, the way you approach marketing is so woven into sustainability, um, environmental planetary sustainability. So I'm really curious what you, um, yeah, how you think about that? Like how does, how does traditional or conventional marketing um, you know, harm the planet? Uh, and, and what is your, you know, what, what's your mission? What's, what's the mission you're on to transform marketing so that it is good for the planet? Kind of talk us through that a bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, basically, like, I, I feel we have formed a society that is focused on cheap and fast products. We have to have it now. We have to have it uh, yesterday. And it has to be as cheap as possible. Um, the, like, even during COVID, you know, we saw that Amazon uh, employed 100,000 more people just because people felt, oh no, I can't go out. I have to buy something. Let me go shopping online. And people were just buying like crazy. After we had a whole year of protesting for our planet on Fridays, it's, it's like all of a sudden, boom, our, our values had changed. Um, or our goals, our ethics seem to change like immediately once we were in lockdown. Um, but basically, I feel that we have lost our connection to nature. And, you know, that has, there's a whole other discussion like uh, about our many layers of ego and how that leaves our lives. And basically, we've just become greedy and, and so privileged and, and, you know, all this technology that we have, we can get things so quickly and, and so cheaply, but at the cost of our environment, at the cost of people, um, you know, child labor, that's all connected. Um, and, you know, even, you know, tearing down our rainforest for the production of livestock to feed livestock. Um, so it's not just what we buy to put on our bodies or you know, the technology that we buy, it's also the food that we eat. Everything has some kind of environmental impact, everything that we produce. And a lot, <laughs> too many companies, the majority of companies are only looking for cheap ways of producing. So they have a very dirty, as I say, a very dirty, uh, supply chain and there are a lot of companies that are coming out over the past 10 years sustainable companies I call them ethical brands um, that are trying to do as much as possible to clean up the supply chains well they start from scratch as you know they only use fair trade and and sustainably made um, materials. Um, that said, like I said, everything that is produced, nothing's 100% ethical, but um, they're on the good way, on a good path to make it as sustainable, as ethical as possible. Um, you know, there are some developments that I'm kind of worried about, like e-cars. Um, for our cities, yes, they're very clean, but how do you get the batteries, right? So we're digging, we're digging up 
um, you know, we're mining for lithium and driving away people who, you know, like in Bolivia, there are, there are lithium mines and, and they don't have enough water. So the farmers, they have, they have to move or the people, the residents have to move. And that is just so that we can have cleaner cities. So my ideal solution, <laughs> which is a bit far reach, um, is to completely stop unethical um, production altogether. Like, boom, just like shut down these companies. And I, I know that's a little, you know, that's far fetched and that's never gonna happen in my lifetime. Um, but I do also envision a world where the governments and the companies and individuals act responsibly and where we have basically found our way back to nature, where we can value nature because we're all interconnected. Um, and if we destroy our oceans from overfishing, from all this plastic, from you know, bleaching, coral reefs, if we destroy our oceans and our rainforests, um, we're going to destroy our own species, and you know it's not going to happen on our lifetimes, of course. But we're we're on a good path to achieving that, and that's like really scary. Although we have, we have the resources, we have the money, we have the knowledge, we have the technology to, um, yeah, to stop it or to at least <laughs> curb it and postpone um so massive destruction um but like yeah, I'm, okay yeah i'm totally with you on this because <laughs> you know a lot of people don't know i actually have uh, i have a I have a graduate degree in sustainable green business um yeah so 2003 2000 i graduated in 2005 with that degree um and yeah we were talking uh, i mean this this, was, this conversation was happening every day um in our classes and things like that and so and and i remember i remember organizing uh like a group screening of inconvenient truth when it first came out in the theaters you know mm. um I was 2000 and what, maybe six or something like that but uh anyway it would and it's it's really um amazing how since then um the the movement has both grown a lot and it has also stalled a lot i'm like yeah. i'm like sure uh, a lot of people yeah. are more aware there's stuff mm -hmm. like b lab b corp um right. and and yet uh there is and then there's like you know esg investing you know and you know socially responsible investing that kind of stuff but it's like yeah. and yet we <laughs> climate is like continuing to to change uh and we haven't really done much <laughs> in terms of the global situation um yeah. and so it is it is it's sad and ultimately well instead of uh you know it's easy for us to sometimes get into despair that oh my gosh this you know world world's going to hell in the handbasket kind of thing but yeah. we can still feel hope if we do what we can right it's like it's like exactly. yeah, you know, because of, what else can we do except if we change our behavior it might inspire others and you're you're an example of that where you are um you know doing it yourself and inspiring others and so i want to i want to spend the rest of our, our short time together talking about the four c's because uh that is i think going to be useful to to um all the marketers and the business owners who are watching this as well so um walk us through the four c's again and um maybe if you could come up with an example of how you're applying uh applying these four c's if, if one comes to mind yeah um okay the first one communication that is so important that's like the you know the main thing in marketing how you communicate also like how you present and um has to be honest be transparent um just mindful of how you communicate uh i see all the time like articles on yeah how to how to um instill FOMO, the fear of missing out into your marketing strategy, like how to use it most effectively. I'm like, no. Um, basically, yeah, I can't, I I can't believe it's like, <laughs> it's like how to be evil, uh, how to be consciously evil. <laughs> it's like, okay. Exactly. <laughs> Whoa. And um, so 
you know, communication is very important and how you use it um, for your own benefit, but also for the benefit of others. Um, you know, everybody, every company, it's okay to make money. You're supposed to make money because if you can't make money, you can't give back. You can't help others. You can't help yourself, you know? So, um, you know, but it just has to be a transparent way of communicating, even, even for ethical brands, because I see a lot of, a lot of brands just saying, we donate 2% of our revenue to charity. And that's not, enough like you know people want to know how do you work with your charity partner um what does that actually mean two percent of your revenue what has happened with that money and it's also like you know the company gives back but why is the company giving back because of the clients or because of the customers so it's actually their contribution and you know you have to let your customers and and clients know that how they are contributing to to help um, our society um, the next one is connection and you know during covid there wasn't a lot of connection um, in real life uh, but i i i noticed that you know everybody just embraced this virtual connection because we just we needed it we so very needed it um, and for me connection means um just finding like-minded people like you know just connecting with them on a, in an authentic way and not just you know hey you have to you know i want you to buy my service or buy my product and otherwise i'm not gonna you know i i don't care about you um because that's a you know this uh yeah it's it's also for me like I look for these connections um, on LinkedIn or whatever, and I have like my Excel sheet, my spreadsheet that you know has okay people I want to connect with, and um, you know it's like kind of like a a swipe file that oh oh I see somebody and okay yeah I, I write it down I have to connect with this person over the next few weeks and and then we have a chat and it's just it's just wonderful and then we find ways to collaborate. The next C, um, because you know, we're a lot of the companies that I work for, or the the companies that I work with, they're all trying to reach the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and I don't see enough unification in our world today. We have a thousands of organizations working for the same goal, working alone, and that is just so destructive, so inefficient. Um, I just, I'd love to see like everybody working towards climate action, number 13. Hey, why can't we just unite? I mean, I know, you know, just like with companies, every organization have, has their own way of doing things, um, but still the, the ultimate goal is the same. I see a lot of collaboration, definitely especially in this space, in this eco space, but still not enough. So um, what I always advise my clients is I actually, I research for them who they should collaborate with and how they should collaborate with them, um, you know, whether it's with a specific campaign or, um, you know, just uh, an event or something. Um, because I just think we can reach the goals quicker that way and everybody benefits, it's a win-win. Um, like, okay, for sustainable fashion companies, um, you can set up a fashion show together because your clients or your customers and the other, your collaborative partners, customers, they fit. They, you know, and no, no one human being is loyal to one fashion brand. I mean, I, I, it's just not possible. So you're gaining also their customer base and vice versa and showing them a, a way that competitors can collaborate. Cause that was the one thing in the corporate world that I just did not resonate with. It was how this beat the competition and how we, um, how my bosses actually talked 
badly about the competition and and there was just there's just so much fear about competition it's it, it makes no sense to me because first of all you can learn from them and you can collaborate with them and you can work very well with them um i work with my collaborative marketing friends i call them you know all the time you know you're a marketer too it's like we do the same work some of the, you know some of it is different and we have our different ways of doing it but we can really work well together um and then the next one creativity and that's just fun that's just a given like you know marketing has to be creative and um you know from design to how you write and you know your own style and so yeah that's yeah. that's how I that's do. thank you so much for sharing that yeah it's uh definitely paints a, a more um holistic and life-giving vision to what marketing can be instead of instead of the four p's <laughs> and i think it's more um i think it's more modern as well the way you're thinking about it and it, it makes i feel like the four p's are probably created in the 1970s or something like that you know and, <laughs> and like all the textbooks talk about it and then we just right. have you know, they haven't updated the textbooks um right. well thank you so much jessica for the work that you do i want to just uh we'll, we'll end this conversation by having having you share what um, what kind of services and and offerings you provide and to whom which who's your ideal client yeah um well i provide creation of marketing strategy of a non-manipulative marketing strategy and um that yeah the whole the whole strategy from your branding to um you know finding out your usp to um who you want to and usp connect just to with. clarify is unique selling proposition selling. right uh yeah so that's great what makes you unique and mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and before like several years ago um it was because we're sustainable well that's not unique anymore so it has to be it has to be something else and so i dive deep into a brand um to uh yeah create their strategy and um and i also offer copywriting i call it conscious copywriting i think that's actually how we met <laughs> and um and i offer voiceovers so uh yeah voice recordings to um you know to narrate image films or commercials or even telephone messages and stuff like that and um also some implementation of the strategy not everything but um parts of it and you know that i could it um yeah like uh, right now i'm doing some keyword research for a client and for another one i'm um working out the editorial calendar and um or you know campaigns uh event management stuff like that and uh yeah i i work with with social entrepreneurs who are trying to reach the sustainable development goals so you know whether you're um mostly for you know for animal and environment protecting i call them visionary leaders and um but you know the the stgs they're also all interconnected so um yeah anybody who is really who who has a you know a, a clean supply chain now if there's a company who wants to go in that direction and needs help i also help with that too um because as long as the will is there then um then i'm there to help so <laughs> thank you so much jessica yeah awesome well i'm gonna have the link uh to your website below this video and i'm sure people can and the way i found you i think i'm googling conscious copywriting and you're you're on the first page so that's awesome but um yeah, yeah the link to your site will be below ethicalbrandmarketing.com mm -hmm. so that's really easy to remember and yeah thanks for the work you do and sort of the way you do it um the values that you're kind of instilling in the world so thanks for thanks for everything and thank you george for having me and for also yeah being an advocate yeah yeah <laughs> for the work you do yeah totally yeah. thank you